up with Python conditions. Okay, condition statements, set statements. We'll be going from there. So, uh, like the operators yesterday, we looked on comparison operators. You might have seen equal equals to not equals to greater than lesser than greater than equals to and less than equals to. All those operators we have done, right? Okay, that is easy, understandable, everyone. Okay, now uh, flow control statements are of three types. First of all, okay, so they are of type if statement, else statement, and elif statement. Okay. Uh, let's write it or conditions or let's name it as flow control okay so there are three kinds the very first one is of if the second goes with else And the third goes with elif. Okay, all these three are there. So let's run it. Okay, now understanding if statement. Okay, so if statement is a statement which will execute if your statement condition, whatever you write is true. Now your statement consists of particularly if keyword, a condition, a colon, uh, starting of the next line with an indented block. Okay, you can say it as a clause. So all these things are there. Okay. So statement will only execute if your conditions of the statements what you write are true. Okay, so we'll have to write it like something like for a note that if uh, statements Okay, so it consists of what? What I said? It consists of an if keyword. It consists of a condition, a colon, and starting on the next line, what we say it has to be indented block okay all these other things now this have a syntax of how so it syntax is that if uh, whatever just a uh, normal text expression and I'm writing if a test expression, then a colon. Okay, after that, an indented block. That means five tab spaces. One, two, three, four, five. Five tab spaces. Okay, or you can just have it like this. Simply. And here will be your. Statements. Okay. 
ओके okay this statement comes inside this however here it is coming outside but that is completely inside it. this is the way how you will be writing your if syntax first of all okay now we need to solve uh, some you know queries and questions based on this very simple thing how to use it so in if statement you will be having a keyword a condition a colon and an indented block okay let's say that a word is there named jackrob So what we'll do is that if the word is found to be equals to Jacob, then we'll print hi Jacob. Okay. Simply like this, okay. Simple word is equals to Jacob. What we are doing if the word is equal equals to particularly what we are doing, word is equal to equals to Jacob, it will give some uh, boolean results if true or if false, particularly. So, if true, then print this, if false, then don't print, right? So, for false condition, we haven't given anything, right? So, this is a positive testing. Right, for only with the if there is no negative ways we are taking out here. Okay, so for like say, uh, if my num1 is equals 5, num2 equals negative 6, we'll test if num1 greater than 0. print positive and it's positive okay again if you want like if you are writing it again if num2 less than 0 print negative positive negative okay clear this is how you are going to write now if you want both of them in one particular uh, area then you have to use another statement too however apart from the if statements okay let's go on to the else let's see how else works out first of all so we'll be just copying oops i guess yeah so we'll just take it there as a markdown i'll paste it and this are your else statement and uh, this else here are the statement we will execute again like if uh, now here what you have to do is if statements are the statement which will execute now no conditions of the statement are true or false that is not going to be mentioned here okay which will execute the written codes okay they don't check anything they just print it okay so else keyword is there, a colon is there, okay, no conditions are there. And starting on the next line, this is again there, okay. So syntax is there, if uh, in place of this, there is an else and no text uh, test expressions are there, just only else and a colon and then the statements what is to be printed, simply like this. Remember the same program. So if num1 greater than 5 then printing positive. And if it is not positive then obviously it will be negative. Right. So num1 what it says. Oops. 
So num1 is greater than 0 means positive or else it will give you negative. Okay. Simple. All right. Now, maybe it could be 0. Right. Also, that situation could come like if, if the user is giving an input, then that situation could come that it will become 0. Okay. So in that case, what to have uh, what have to be done? Then you have to check it for the uh, next time also that whether this is going to be zero or not, right? Whether the input provided by the user is something else or not. So for checking another time, for checking like once you have checked your conditions and then checking for the other condition or checking for the other time if you require any statement as far as elif statement, okay? Similar like it's else and if so if if it is done and the next statement you require so it goes like else if if this is a statement if this is a statement then like that okay and finally go with the else if nothing is being left for checking and the last code will be run like an else all right so if statements are the statement here you can say like elif statements okay if your conditions of the statements are again true, right? Okay. Similar to if. Now, within the same program, if we mention like this, that int of input Integer number In between this positive and negative, if greater than zero means positive, what if it is zero? Then elif would be here. Elif, else if the number is equal equals to zero, e print. See. Or else, if it is even not zero, then obviously it will be a negative one. That's a very simple is positive minus 4 what's it there now it's not defined oops minus 4 is negative 0 clear to everyone I guess so all right okay Any doubts? No, sir. Okay. Now you can check a prime number, a non prime number using this. Or uh, starting number, stopping number, list of, uh, you know, like prime numbers, range. Yesterday I made you done like simply right if you remember if you again call it Okay, so let's say if we want to check that whether a number is a prime number or not a prime number You can check it with the following uh, different ways also, but uh, I think we should go with the modules too also like modules answers may be somewhere you get right uh, sorry the uh, basic method everywhere you are going to get this module answer as well quite uh, difficult because it's not well given in anywhere on the webs okay you have to search for the particularly the things so in input let's say we give enter number
and if this uh, prime if the number is prime which number the input if this is prime will print it is a prime number or else we'll just print Thirty four is non prime, twenty three is prime, it's prime. Okay, this is how it's going to work. Okay. Now, if if you want to see like what are the range of numbers between two intervals of prime number, like for example. Starting number input. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so starting input and starting output, stopping output you can say. On. Okay, now let's say or stopping input, let's say that is better. Hmm? Okay, like this. Now, so we want to see the user going to give inputs and in the starting. Uh, starting variable and in the stopping variable like he has given 34 to uh, 570 so between 34 to 570 how many prime numbers are there simple what you do is you provide the stand in you provide the stown in okay and uh, then you just print prime numbers like this that prime numbers And then you are going to print the prime range yesterday we did range right so prime range between 10 to 4 between 5 to 20 there are 5 7 11 13 uh, th 17 and 19 as a prime number if you say from 3 to uh, 19 these are the prime numbers
clear now you make a question everyone is clear with this yes sir yes sir yes sir okay try to solve this one give the answer quick check the divisibility of an integer by another integer how you will make it whether the number is divisible not divisible something like okay write the answer in the chat box quickly A B input divided by B and number divisible. Okay. But that is for A when divided by B. What if B divided by A and uh, the next condition?
No answers. Okay. Here till what you have shared is correct. No issues for that. But how to check the next divisible R keys? Like for A, this is once so you know five space. Okay. So here is okay. Number divisible. But what about like A divided by B is being done right? We have taken the input when it gives you zero equals to that's better. Okay. Now what if then B divided by zero? Next divisibility. And then also in the else you can go with the things. Okay. So if I take three and four here. Oops, sorry. It's not being checked. Not divisible. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Else we haven't given it. Else what we have not given. Huh? Okay, like this. All right. Okay, so till here, whatever we have done, or checking odd and even, checking a leap year is not a leap year, all those things has been given in your uh, files. Okay, for an assignment. Okay, so till conditions, I guess your things are clear with the assignment parts also. Okay, uh, so let's see, like if uh, someday we did some extension file for membership operators and are looking on there, right? Today, I think if we do that program, you will be able to see it. Okay. So let's say in the files we have extension for, uh, let me make it as code first of all. Let's say in the file we have extensions for PDF, uh, for JPG. Okay. And user is going to upload something, right? So input, enter uh, file name. And now what we do is we'll split it okay with what with dot okay now what we'll do is uh, user will store two different names as in list format okay now we have to check that if the user of last one last element that means negative one so if the last element lies in the files we will print Or you can say uh, upload successful better or else you can just print an extension error or upload field Thank you for uploading. Uh, there is a comma. Sorry. Thank you for uploading a document. What if I write?
explode failed and extension error okay it's better okay this is how it's going to work okay now you want to check leap here you want to send otp valid otp or not okay identifying all those things like how to check the otp let's say for example and in your mobile applications how you check otp particularly let's say okay now my OTP is there okay so I can take OTP as an STR format first thing next is my number which will be an input Okay, now if the length of the number is not equals to 10, then we'll just write number equals to none. Okay, and we'll print input 10 digit number. you may missed or have written or have exceeded would be better okay right if the length of the number is not equal to 10 this is the case what we'll be doing there or else will print if number is equal then we'll be printing verify the OTP now OTP given by the user will be an input enter OTP received on your number negative 4 Mm, okay, going to receive the number. Hmm. The OTP is done. Now, if the uh, length of OTP what will be given is again not equals to six. If it is not equals to six, we'll just print that this is an invalid OTP. Okay, we print it as an invalid OTP. And then the user OTP will be equals to none. Or LF, if your OTP is equals to the OTP, what uh, we have uh, received here, right? So we can print OTP verified or in the else you can just state an invalid OTP sorry not 
code here. Invalid OTP and then simply you can just write. Thank you for using my program. Let's run it. Let's see. Enter the OCP received on this. Let's change this plus this plus ST of this. So verify OTP received on 62 something 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 2517. Uh, what was the OTP? Uh, 938427. So to be verified and say thank you. Clear how it was? Simple. So OTP sent received on this this. And it was again save 938427. Okay, now you can randomly generate your OTP here itself. Like uh, once you define here the OTP equals to str of OTP of when you are defining this randomly and add this case only here itself. Okay, so you have to print it first of all here. Here, you have to print it that OTP is going to be an str of OTP. Okay. Uh, once it, it is being verified then uh, you can generate the OTP in this case itself okay and uh, here what we'll do is we'll print OTP to let the user get the OTP exactly okay so let's say if I remove this and I make it here Okay, uh, let's run it. Let's see. OTP received on this, this, this. Okay, so we, uh, it was in this. Now OTP is getting printed in the last. Let's say I wrote something else. So enter OTP received on this, and I entered something else there. Okay, and it was wrong. All right, so invalid OTP. OTP was 8397. Zero seven. What I have to do is I have to remove this from here and input verify OTP and here we have to generate it. Sorry. Okay. It should be given here. Yeah. That's it. OTP verify. All right. Now, whenever you run it, you have a different thing. Okay. This is all. And uh, then we can give the spaces also. Something like this. Plus. The space something like this okay this is better 762191 and OTP verified thank you for uh, using my program that's it clear to everyone how this works everyone 
Money gates are aggressive. None of them are divided with the adults. Okay, yeah, this is exactly the answer I want. <laughs> okay, so this is how it goes, guys. Okay, using of if and else. Merely like this is how it it is being used. Now, if you want to check a leap year, if this is a leap or not, how you check? So for leap year, it's again simple. It's a leap year or not a leap year, how you'll check. Now let's take for an input, an integer format, you are taking an input over there. Okay. Now if your year, however, from the calendar, you can easily uh, get it now, but still, it's not, when year divided by four is not equals to zero. Okay. We'll print it as a usual year. normal year okay for elif your year divide by 4 or you can say as when it divide by 100 leaves equals to 0 then you can go with the another if inside this event okay so elif inside if inside the elif now that's not as a nested uh, conditions okay nested conditional statements Like this you can write as year is a leap year. All right, or else we can print it the year is not a leap year. Simple, or else directly here itself if it is not divisible by the 100 even and you can go that here it's not a leap year let's run 2020 it's not a leap year okay usual year okay leap year Alright, so something like this, you have to make it run. Okay, this is how it is going to work. So if divided by four not equals to zero, it is usual year. Divide by hundred equals to zero, it's a um, leap year. Or else, if it is not uh, divided by hundred, when divided by hundred not leaves and leaves remainder equals to zero, is a leap year. Or else, it is not a leap year. Okay, and uh, if it is not even divided by hundred, then so we can leave it like it's a Okay, it should be a leap year. Just a minute. Here's a leap year. Uh, let's for like 2020, I guess, also giving wrong answer. Yeah. And now it's better. Okay, leap year. Leap year. Leap year. Okay. Leap year. Yeah. All right. So this is how it is going to work. Okay, clear to everyone. Doubts? Yes, sir. No doubts, right? Great. Okay, so uh, this is how it works. Okay, now uh, you have your assignments there in the, uh, for the if statements particularly, okay. Now, these are very important, like OTP, what you have seen, right? Similar to this, you can apply. Now, when you'll be making your projects, you have to use these kind of methods, right? How all the things, right? So uh, let's understand the topic of indexings and slicings. It's a small topic. Let's understand it quickly. Okay. Now, in indexing, in Python, indexing starts from zero. Now, I have two sides here. That is... From left, it would be starting from zero. So you are 
the number of elements whatever it is uh, I consider as to be infinity okay what, whatever the numbers you are having and from the right I consider from the right I say it goes like minus 1 to minus infinity this is the indexing styles simple okay now how it goes let's say I have a word called as ethical hacking so first of all the length of this word is 15 now if I say where capital E comes in which place so that comes at the zero place word of zero is E similarly word of one will be the next one so zero one let me zoom in yeah so it is zero one two three four five six this is seventh gap eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen all right okay but the length is 15 because length is starting from like here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay 8 and then 7 15 okay length will be 15 but uh, your uh, indexing starts from 0 from here now if we talk about from right hand side from this side from here it will be minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 minus 7 and in this that way it will be going on okay? so if we say that word of 0 and 2 something like this or uh, here it will be like this okay word of 0 this I have used here if you have seen here something okay I'll show you how it works if I only write 0 to 2 0 colon 2 means that you are going to print all the elements from 0 to 2 but not the second one 0 to 2 means only 0 and 1 will be printed 0 to 4 means only 0, 1, 2, and 3 will be printed. Okay, that is clear, right? Now, 0 to 2 e is getting printed. Now, if, you, if I even don't write something here in the word, if I only write it like this, so if I don't write here nothing in the starting point, it means that it, it is going to start from 0 itself. So, both times result is going to be same. Okay, so if there is my number and I write it, to the first two the first two will be this okay if I say the last two the last two would be here minus two so the last two is this okay last would be coming here okay I cannot write last from here like minus uh, one two minus five I think cannot write like this because minus one is this from here you want find minus one to minus one two three four five not like this you can go like this minus one to minus five you can go like minus one to minus five like in this way so you can have minus one to minus five if you want you can write as minus five to minus one and that is your see minus one to minus five answers so if you write uh, six you will get your five okay this is how it is working so sometimes otps are generated within your uh, mobile numbers itself okay remember the last thing like from the 10 if you want a four digit otp it, it it can be generated from itself from here itself how oops so we have an import random if you remember how to make it let's say that this is my my number I want an OTP of four digit five digit I can easily run this is my OTP you don't have to generate it from anywhere else from a number itself you can generate the things okay understood so if your name is this
and this is your name okay or um, and let's say your number this is your mobile number okay you want to create a password using this it can be easily calculated password password would be very easy to make it there okay and that will be again same of this let's say it, uh, you want an eight or ten digit password it's simply like writing suggestions what you get okay for your name okay like let's say you want to make your instagram username with between uh, your name and then using your phone number or your date of birth whatever required so uh, you can write it and let's say we want an eight digit one so we can just easily run and our password would be uh, from here now uh, it would be from the name plus none so password is going to be this very simple if we want uh, 10 digit passwords 12 digit passwords password will be this are you getting my points encryption i'm talking about like security more security how you can make it it's never necessary to go on and then make it from random dot sample and from alphabets again you can create a password from your alphabets again hmm? okay getting my points let's say for example there is a username whose name is jacob his name is jacob daniel okay right let's say let's state of birth is one five let's say okay now and his number is let's say one two three four five six seven eight nine zero let it be and let it be a bit complex something like this okay right not like this all right now if you want to create a password for him what we'll do is this now in case of all this what we'll have to do is we'll have to write name plus tob plus any of and out of this Let's say we want a 16 digit password. We'll run this and this is the password what we are going to get. Is this clear to you? This is how it is going to be done. Very simple. Okay. That's the thing. Now, when you get suggestions for your username, that is how it is being done. Okay. So let's say uh, when you want suggestions from your username, it is like um, your name of your, you know, like first two plus your outputs of your dob plus number okay five samples getting ahead and this is like it can be made it okay or uh, let's say if data birth is being taken like something like this okay so then it would be this something of five even if you take so jacob this jacob this or like this or something like this okay even uh, you want you can write your name last things okay you can use name even right so this is how it can also work some special characters also okay clear guys what about random characters in password like uh, okay at the rate hashtag and all see that you have to mention like if you want special characters too when you want uh, like hashtag at the rate percentile what you're talking about right you can make it that too in case of name if you use spc if you run this and if we find it to be let's say a six digit one so see now that can be used like see jacob one at the rate of three two five five i guess you understood right and that that is how you define the things okay let me stop the video